Hello and welcome to the Worn and Wound podcast. My name is Blake Bettner and I'm in studio today joined uh, with Zach Weiss. Hello, Zach. Hello. How's it going? Uh, real Cheers. well. Cheers. Cheers. We've got, our, uh, we've got our new Glarus Brewing Spotted Cows here. Uh, I brought a 12-pack home with me from Cross holidays. state lines. Oh, cross state you. lines, uh, yes. So if anyone asks, we are recording in Wisconsin right now. Yeah, Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> now, in the airport, they have these. They have uh, 12-packs that you can buy as you're boarding, as you're boarding the plane. Uh, that's like the most Wisconsin thing ever. Right? Yeah. You get like a brat and the 12-pack spot of cows. Yeah. Uh, so I always bring some back with me to, to New York. Uh, and for anyone not in, uh, well, from Wisconsin or in the know, Spotted cow, the New Glarus beers, you cannot, uh, they don't sell them outside of the state of Wisconsin. So it's kind of a, I don't know if it's a big deal, but <laughs> <laughs> have people make a big deal out of it. And it's good, but it's not like. For the Wisconsin folk out it's there. It's not right? like, ooh, yeah. like, ooh I'd, I would like make a trip to Wisconsin. It's 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 good, and it's I say this as a as a beer. Wisconsinite. It's better mm-hmm. on tap. Though. Mm-hmm. Goes well with the cup of coffee I also have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um what are we doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, we've also got Josh over there. Josh, how are you? I'm doing really, really good. All right. Uh, I'll bring some for you uh, next time, too, uh, to just keep in your fridge. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right. In the computer, we've got uh, Mr. Thomas Kalara. Thomas, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, Virtual we, cheers. Yeah, yeah. We've got, uh, uh, yeah, he's in California, so it's uh, it's much earlier for, for him. Not that we judge you for tearing into one. That's all right. Um, I'll catch up in a few hours. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, uh, and finally, Mr. Zach Kazan. Zach Kazan, how are you? Welcome. Hey, guys. I'm doing well. Awesome. Excellent. Um, so we, we talked about our favorite watches last week um, uh, from 2021, and uh, we thought we'd look ahead to 2022 and talk about Maybe some of the trends that we would like to see continued into 2022. Uh, maybe make some predictions. Um, Tudor and, predictions uh, only. Some Tudor predictions <laughs> only. <laughs> Wrong answers only. Yeah. Uh, so before we get to that, um, let's. Are we all wearing watches? We can do a wrist check. Uh, Zach Kazan, what do you got on your wrist? Uh, I'm wearing a watch that I'm uh, currently uh, reviewing for the site. It's the uh, Heim Watches Descent Diver. Okay. Oh yeah, that is a diver. It's got yeah. it's got a, kind of a formal looking dial though on it, right? Yeah, it's a little. Uh, it's kind of like a mishmash of styles. I, I like it. Um, it. That review will be on the site in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, hopefully, it's a nice little kind of uh, you know like unfussy kind of old fashioned uh, dive watch. It's really nice size. It wears well, um, and the dial's pretty interesting. It's a it's really cool shade of blue that's almost like a purple um, hmm. that okay. I haven't really seen on a watch like this before. It's nice. Nice, cool, very cool. I uh, look forward to seeing that one. Uh, Thomas Clara, what about you? What are you rocking? Uh, so today I have the uh, Omega Seamaster. Uh, it's a vintage one. So this was a pre the uh, diver uh, Seamaster. So yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, they made yeah. some. Uh, boy, they have some beautiful old uh, watches in that range. Uh, I think. Oh, for sure. Um, like an endless supply. I think they're. It would just. I don't know if there is. There may be a book of literally, literally every Seamaster reference. Like. Just like they, they went through every possible watch design from like 1950 <laughs> to like 1970 or something. They did. You, and you'll see people come into the forum sometimes like looking for help identifying a watch yeah. that was like in their family. And it's some old Omega watch and it's kind of yeah, all uh, over the map. No. Yeah, I've gone to a boutique. And when I first got this watch, I had a couple um, older Omega Seamasters and they brought out this thick book. And I thought that I didn't realize that they had so many in their catalog that you just had to go through. And like you said, Zach, there's just an endless amount of Seamasters about mm-hmm. like around that time. And apparently like no interest in like naming. They're just like, what, what are we going to call this one? Just call it a Seamaster. Just, just Seamaster. put it out there. Just, uh, it's that's why it's so tricky. To, 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 it's like, well, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's this. Does this one go in the water? Shut up. It's a Seamaster. But, a lot of, but they're, they're pretty good looking though. Like, no, they're eyes. great. They've got some really gorgeous some of, like ones. the nicest like classic vintage watches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zach Weiss, what are you wearing? Um, blast from the past. I got my Stoa Partidio uh, limited edition, one of our nice. earlier worn and wound limited editions. So that is a sharp yeah. dial. I like thank that. you, thank you. Yeah, I was just uh, looking in the watch box and I was like, stop, stop wearing those five watches you've been wearing every day. Yeah, <laughs> go for one of the other very nice watches you have. So I did that. Thing. Yeah, I did something similar and ended up with. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that good choice. With another like worn it. and wound a collaboration <laughs> watch. This is the uh, Christopher Ward worn and wound C60. Sandstorm. Yes. Not C60. Yeah. C60. Sandstorm. Yeah, it's a 60. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this is the steel case yeah. um, and dial. 
I like this watch a lot. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of really uh, nice elements that click on this one. Um, I'm and, still very happy with that one. Yeah, I, yeah, this just came out great. And somebody uh, somebody listed one for sale on Reddit. How dare they? To, mm-hmm. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on now. Um, uh, and, I, and then that guy, yeah. Yeah. Ah, I love it. Um, I got to wear mine, so I pulled it out of the box today to wear. Um, Josh, what do you got on over there? Got my root beer queue as usual. Mm-hmm. And uh, I took all of my watches that had been uh, sidelined due to, what we'll call them injuries. Um <laughs> What's it called? I took them all to get service today, so I'm oh, picking nice. so I'm picking them up tomorrow and hopefully have a little bit more variety. Oh, right time. on! Yeah. Very cool. Uh, we'll look forward Very to seeing we'll look forward <laughs> to next week then, uh, seeing what you what you got on. Um, well, cool. That's a nice little lineup we've got uh, uh, here. A very, a very unusual. I feel like usually it's always it's a. I I would have bet money, Zach, on the watch that you that you I mean, that I thought I, you were gonna wear wear it today. There aren't a, there aren't a lot of watches. I I'm, I'm, my collection's kind of kind of lean these days, and I, I like to wear uh, you know kind of the same watches over and over again. So yeah. it was nice to switch it up with a um, you know with a watch that's in for for review. You got to wear it if you're yeah. reviewing it. It's yeah. part of the great yeah. thing that we really get to you know do with 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 reviewing watches that you don't really think about. But it's like we are part of one of those clubs where you're loaned watches periodically yeah. and like so you just get to try things for a few weeks and mm-hmm. send them back and you know it's yeah. like it's a nice way to i don't know test the waters with different brands different styles yeah rent the runway um <laughs> yeah yeah it, and honestly i feel like after after i've had like a busy season of reviewing things it's like refreshing to kind of be able to come back to your own mm-hmm. like oh i'm excited to wear that watch in my collection or that watch in my collection that i haven't worn forever because yeah. Yeah, you're dedicating your wrist time to these certain watches that you want to give like a fair crack. Our precious yeah. wrist time. How dare they? Yeah, yeah. right. And uh, <laughs> and like you know, you may have noticed like when we review watches, we like to uh, you know we get into some of the nitty gritty and the details, and sometimes mm-hmm. you don't really notice those things until after you've had it on your wrist for a while. Yeah, like, oh, this thing has really grown sure. to irk me, or I didn't really notice this at first, but after a week or two of wearing it's it, it's also like yeah, you don't you don't get those things when you put them on, you wear them at your desk for 15 minutes. It's like when you're walking an hour with groceries or something, you know, and then you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, like that's, it's pretty comfortable or, you know, whatever. I, it, yep. It's the mundane times I don't have my best thoughts yeah. about watches. But that's, you yeah. know, if you buy it, that's the kind of stuff that you'll notice. And yep. that's what we owe to you readers, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Um, are we talking about? What, yeah, watches. Uh, <laughs> we're, we are getting into, um, we're getting into 2022 uh, now. We are midway through January. Uh, we've already seen some some watch releases. We are coming up to uh, some of some of the big release periods, I guess you would say. Um, I think next week we've got the LVMH the thing, and then the we've got Longines meeting after that, and uh, the, the, the the stuff is is, is coming. starting to roll out. It's, it's yeah. starting to come. Yeah. So uh, so what better time than right now to start thinking about what we hope to see and what. Uh, what we would like to see. Uh, last year was an unusual year for uh, for well for a lot of reasons, um, and I think um, I think that some brands reacted differently. I think some brands were very well prepared, uh, but we saw a lot of um, kind of out of the norm releases last year. I felt like, uh, mm. and uh, uh, and you mentioned Tudor, like I think that's a perfect example. Um, like I, they didn't really have many releases kind of in their core like range of like, all right, this is going to be like a foundation piece that's, you know, I think those, those two Black Bay chronographs were probably the closest that they came to that. I didn't remember that those were released last year. Yeah. Was like, yeah. Was like, like just a straight up black and white dials with yeah. the reverse. Uh, um, but everything else was kind of like, not out of left field, but definitely... No, somewhere. A little more. I, yeah, somewhere very out. We, we, <laughs> silver dive watch silver dive is left field. Like a silver dive watch. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's unusual. Left field and outer space. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So I think, um, and, and I feel like I've seen that with a few other brands too. So um, so I, I keep thinking that this year is going to be a year of, of kind of like returning to some of the core models um, and, uh, you know, making updates to uh, to some of those core watches that haven't been updated in a long time. Um, so... Yeah, I th- I think uh, that's that's kind of like what I'm basing a lot of what I'm I'm thinking about. Uh, of course, we talked a little bit about this last time, like how green was so hot coming into the year in 2021. Mm. But then by the end of the year, it was just kind of like a normal thing to see all kinds of colors. And you saw a lot of this kind of even trickling into uh, uh, like micro brands, smaller brands, all kinds of brands. It was just kind of a normal thing to see to see different different dial colors and different dial textures too. I feel like by the end of the year, this was just kind of like yeah, a the normalized thing. thing right? I forget when we sort of made that 
prediction if that was going into last year or something. I, I think, yeah, it might have been actually been going into last year. Um, I kind of recall Zach or I talking about like dial textures as being like the thing yeah. we wanted to see or the thing that uh, we we expected to, and and that happened. It yeah. definitely did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, we, we were right. We were right. <laughs> Where's my money? <laughs> Broken clock is right twice a day. Sixty yeah. percent <laughs> of the time, it works every time. Every time. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Um, so yeah, what uh, is there anything that you guys saw from 2021 that uh, that you'd really like to see continued in 2022, or anything conversely that? Uh, boy, I hope Brand stopped doing uh, this. Uh, Zach Zan, you got anything? Um, I think I'd like to see more um, of kind of what you described Tudor doing in 2021, like more kind of like um, like unexpected releases, kind of risky adventurous releases like mm. um not all of those tutor releases really um hit for me necessarily like i don't know that i'd want to own um like any of them like you know <laughs> but sure. i i, I kind of like that um that they like took some chances and kind of went into these like little niches um to find like smaller groups of you know customers or or, or, or watch buyers maybe than like big mass market items so i think you're probably right that we'll see Tudor and maybe other brands return to like the, those foundational models this year. Um, but I hope that at least some brands kind of take similar chances um, and, and release some things that like we could, we couldn't possibly expect. I don't think anyone predicted a silver dive watch last year. I don't think anyone predicted, um, you know, like a, a watch like the FXD would be released, yeah, uh, you not. know, last year. And mm-hmm. like neither of those watches are watches that I like personally would would choose to buy for myself, but I'm glad that they are out there and that Tudor uh, like took the risk in uh, in making them, and um, you know it paid off. It doesn't always pay off. Like they they released the P01 a few years ago, which was uh, I think um, you know universally not universally, but like people didn't really like that watch a whole lot. Like when it first when it first came out. Do you um, think if that came so, out today, it would be better received? Um. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, that's a that's a really good question. Uh, maybe maybe yeah. a little bit. I think maybe people have gotten just in a really short period of time. Maybe people have gotten a little bit used to sort of like stranger watches uh, like that popping up. But yeah. um, that's a that's a really good question. I wonder if they're selling um, any better than. than yeah, more. that's that's a, that's a better follow. <laughs> that's a good follow up question for. I, but, I remember yeah. when that came out, thinking like, well, we should pick up one of those because I bet they're not going to make many. Because yeah. I bet not many people yeah. are going to like get it uh, yeah. and like buy them and so you know i bet they're not going to respond to that with like tons of production uh, numbers on them and i, I never see them yeah. like on people's wrists i never see them come up for sale <laughs> like i really wonder how many of those they actually are like out in yeah. in the wild and how, and how many they produce i feel like that that watch is is a few degrees away from like being um a lot more interesting like if it was wearable i think obviously like the the lug um, yeah. length on that kind of like immediately disqualified it for for a lot of people. Um, so so there was like some weirdness there, but I but I think that uh, um, that watch caught uh, caught the ire of people more than it should have just because it seemed that they were like priming for a really return of a Submariner, right? Mm-hmm. Like I felt like they. They, well, they their their teasers that, that teaser was yeah. like they knew what the they were famous, doing there and yeah, i feel yeah. like that upset people more than yeah. like the watch itself when people talk about people. brands trolling that was the most genuine mm-hmm. trolling a brand has ever done they literally i mean and to like the like when you troll people you piss them off they pissed off everyone yeah, it, yeah. so i think I, if they had done them. that i like it a lot more i want one if no. they had come out with that as just like a Oh, by the way, yeah. like we also did this other weird thing. I think people would have been like more, oh, that's an interesting curiosity or it's this or this, that, instead of like everyone's super hyped for this, like their favorite watch to come back and then yeah. oh, so close and then so far, so far away. Uh, Thomas, what was your take on the PO one when it came out? Yeah, I think um, I thought it was a cool watch and I've had a couple of chances to see it in person and um, it does wear fairly large on wrist, but um, I do think that some brands took cues from that release. So that the P1 was released a couple years ago, right? Three or four? Mm -hmm. 2019? 2019. No, 2019. Really? 2020? I don't know. No, I was was at Basel when it was released. (laughs) Was that the last Basel? God, 18. We we have a website. You can probably look this up. 
Jeez it was 2019. Right. That just throws me. But I'm so like the COVID years kind of mm. threw me off. I'm gonna look this up. Continue. Yeah, but I, I I think that some brands kind of took cues from that, and uh, we we've seen um, different, especially how the the end link kind of like transitions into the the strap, and um, I think that's kind of like a look I'd like to see more of. Mm -hmm. And uh, although I wasn't a really a fan of kind of like the sizing of the PO one, I've seen you know brands like. Um, the circa 5303 i thought that was like kind of like a nice way of um uh doing their own take on mm -hmm. uh that style mm -hmm. uh of the case transitioning into the strap yeah and they nail the proportions on that and i, I totally agree i think that's an, an area that's like ripe for exploration and creativity from from brands to start exploiting like that that case to bracelet transition mm. i mean it completely adds another level of personality to that serica just like just having that like odd and like, yeah. how it kind of fits into the into those lugs well it's nice when, i mean the whole watch seems conceived as like a whole and it's not just yeah a three link bracelet. It was 2019, by the way, and that totally blows my mind. It was that like six months later we had COVID. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. And, and that, to, to Zach's sentiment, too, I mean, that's what I appreciate about Tudor. I mean, it's they kind of uh, thought outside the box there and they kind of released something that not, not everyone was going to kind of clamor over to, to, to buy. So mm -hmm. I think that's good on Tudor for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, I think I think in all fairness, I think uh, it was entertaining. It was fun to watch Tudor this year. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. uh, so you know, I I I would like to see brands take that that route as well. Um, of you know, boy, look what they did last time. I have no idea what they're gonna do now. Like there's something like by the end of the near year, like it was you know all bets are off, <laughs> uh, which which is kind of a fun feeling. Um, so uh, while we're on Tudor, I wanted to uh, I share this article. I forget who where it was in. Um, uh, it, it was a, somebody had reached out to a few uh, you know experts asking them for their predictions on Rolex or whatever for 2022. Um, Rob report maybe. Mm. Uh, and uh, anyways, we had a few friends in there. Uh, Morgan King uh, was one of them, and he I don't know if you guys read this. His answer uh, about Rolex combining uh, the Air King and the Milgauss and calling it the Mill King. <laughs> <laughs> line. Uh, I just wanted to give him a That's shout out good. because yeah. uh, I, I really enjoyed reading his <laughs> his, uh, his predictions there, and uh, and it got me thinking. Oh, uh, the milk. Yes, that would make sense. They're already in the same case. Like they're already kind of like on the funky realm for for well, Rolex, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, pretty normal. Um, but uh, oh boy, would that be the most un Rolex thing ever to do? <laughs> but um, but I like it, and I like thinking about that. And so, shouts to you, Morgan. Uh, Morgan King, um, uh, Thomas Clara. What about you? Is there any trends that you uh, that that you enjoyed in twenty one, or uh, or would prefer to see uh, go away for twenty twenty two? Yeah, I mean, I saw uh, kind of from our previous or it was two episodes ago when we had our listeners kind of send in their their favorite twenty twenty one releases and kind of just seeing that list and seeing the trend towards sub 40 millimeter watches. So I think that's something that will continue in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, 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 me personally, I would like to see some watches in the GMT space, uh, approachable and affordable uh, GMT watches, sub 40 millimeters, uh, and doing it in creative ways. Uh, I think IWC does a UTC time zoner with the um, little window at 12 or right below yeah. 12. I think that's a pretty cool watch. And mm -hmm. I also think IWC as a whole is a, a brand to kind of look out for in 2022, see what they come out with. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, they've been leaning hard into the pilot chronograph, uh, mm -hmm. big pilot uh, uh, lines. And they've got some, some great other collections uh, that I'm really excited to see what they do with, if they do anything with them. Uh, in, well, every year's an anniversary. Year. So. Every year's an anniversary, so, so yeah, let's Scott find one. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> We've been asking for new, for what, new new engineers and new uh, yeah. aqua timers, I feel like, forever. So yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe this year. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I put it in the, the Slack the other day with that uh, aqua timer perpetual calendar with the digital month yeah, and day. Really like, cool. yeah. I totally forgot that existed, but wow, wouldn't that... That is so cool. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't even realize that they had any kind of permutations on their perpetual calendar at all. But that one, which I guess is also a chronograph on top of everything else, but like yeah. 
the way that sort of crosses line, like, like there's something zeitwerky about it just because of the double date, like digit window. Mm-hmm. Uh, that thing, that is so cool. That's yeah, cool. they've got a they've got a really unique language, I think, for some of those things. And you know, if they can get the whole scale thing <laughs> down working in their favor, then you know, I it was think a forty nine millimeter. They, they, yeah, they'd really be in business <laughs> on on some of these. So, uh, so no, I, I think that's right, and I think that's something that we talked a lot about going into last year as well. Just brands being more sensitive to users. Um, uh, like the ergonomics of their watches as mm-hmm. a whole. And I have noticed this year, uh, like press releases on product pages, all this kind of stuff, I'm seeing more of the lug to lug measurement and mm-hmm. case thickness. I feel like it used to be like maybe case diameter, uh, you know, you would get to, or, or something like that. But now I feel like brands know, like, yeah. this is, this is the things that people are looking for. And this is, you know, what we have to account for. Especially, you know, thinking about the fact that like, I use I use it to kind of like fall back on the like, well, there's there's the enthusiasts out there that want their 36 millimeter watches or whatever it is. But like the world at large, people are buying at jewelry stores are not involved in Instagram and all the, you know, mania that we are like they are not following the same trends and they probably want a big watch and, you know, or they like them regardless of these other trends. And they look better in cases, which is part yeah. of the reason why large yeah. watches do well. Um, but when you look at some of these additions perpetual calendars or whatever being one of them where they're only going to make what 25 of those like they're making a small like ultimately those are probably going to a more enthusiast diehard sort of audience anyway so like with certain models and certain styles i feel like they really can play you know for the course so oh to yeah speak, you know yeah absolutely uh and i hope so so props to brands that are starting yeah. to do that um, and think about uh, us, our, our, you know, our, our wrists uh, at the end of the day and our, and our comfort level. Um, you know, I think it's important, and, and, and I'm sure I've said this a million times on the podcast, but, you know, if you want people wearing your watch, like, all the time, they're going to kind of create more, um, you know, equity with that person, like, mm-hmm. through the events of their lives if they're wearing that watch on their wrist rather than, like, oh, I really like that watch, but it's in my watch box, so... I'm mm-hmm. not wearing it for whatever important thing that ever happens in my in my life, you know, um, and that's how and that's how you start to build an affinity for the the brand, right? Mm-hmm. Is that how that happens? I don't know. <laughs> that's what I've heard at least. Yeah. Who knows anymore? Uh, <laughs> you got to be using it and wearing it while I you're. I thought doing... you just did that with influencers. I'm, 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 I'm oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, and <laughs> NFTs. Well, we're we're yeah, we're way over our head when yeah. it comes to that stuff. Um, um, yeah. What about you, Zach? Um, Oh, I think that uh, I think the dress watch is poised for a triumphant return, and this sort of plays off of certainly what Thomas is saying. We're smaller watches, but you know, last year we saw um, you know wildly successful launches from Baltic with the MR01 and uh, Furlan Mari with I forgot what those watches are called. They're the Tasty Tondas or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which are obviously most more you know brigade style kind of early 20th century sort of classical dress watch styles mm-hmm. um and we just saw oris come out with the rectangular which yeah. it's really cool. you know is definitely playing well that's they, they've had the rectangular line forever so this they're just doing what they're doing they've brought it back but you know that that coincides with popularity of the tank going up and all that. Yeah. like it just feels like there's the the pitch is coming you know it's like we're gonna hit there and then suddenly we're gonna get a lot of dress watches or you know whatever that means also i sometimes fight with the concept of what a real dress watch is because like you know one could argue the the watch i'm wearing by virtue of the fact of being a small three-hand watch in a polished case could be a dress watch but it's you know i don't think i would say that with this watch but whatever you know we can kind of fight that out later but classic people just don't get people don't get dressed up anymore so it's like yeah, no, you know, exactly. Like, Especially as you're working watches, from home, like, you know, like yeah. the, the real need for that formal watch is, is, has gone out. And like the idea that you can't wear a nice dive watch or Speedmaster or something with your, you know, tux. Like the, the reality is it's all, there's no rules, but. Or a Cartier with sweats. Yeah. yeah. Like a, right. <laughs> Cartier with cuts both ways. <laughs> yeah. The scumbag chic apparently works really well with like the Cartier crash, you know, it's like, yeah. that's sort of that, that style. Yeah. But yeah, I just think, I think it's going to happen. And, you know, I uh, think once again, I ran like IWC. If you look back at those early perpetual calendars, they were in Da Vinci's. Yep. Which are strange watches, and they're fairly small, actually. Um, those yeah. might be some of the first ceramics too. They did. Yeah, and um, talk about like case to lug to strap transition. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little. <laughs> they had some crazy on ones thing. back there. Yeah, um, so that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I think I think that's a good point, and I think that uh, is something that we talked a lot about this year and the kind of uh, 
the blurring of the lines between genres mm-hmm. um, of, of watches that kind of classify as like, you know, they're not going to like call it, this, this watch is a, like this. Like the Pelagos was almost, or the FXD was like weird because it's like explicitly this. And, and I think you see a lot of watches, especially like tool watches kind of like starting to lean towards the, like, oh, this could be used in this realm. And, you know, like how Serica talks about the 5303, I think that kind of language will start to be adopted more and more. And mm-hmm. the types of, the, the kind of imagery that they use, they advertise that 5303, like, with a diver all suited up and all that kind of stuff. Also with a guy in, like, uh, you know, leisure suit by the pool and, mm-hmm. and, like, working everywhere in between. Um, you know, I think that's something that consumers want to see that kind of flexibility with what they can wear. Um, so I, I think that's something that we will, uh, it's not just going to be like a straight up, like, all right, now we're in like super formal watch world, but it's going to be more of, you know, how can we design these watches and yeah. make them work in all of these kind of environments? Um, yeah, and I feel like, you know, I even think about like the the Omega, vintage Omega Seamaster you were just talking about, like those sort of are in that realm, like of by today's standards, like dress watches, but like yeah. what they aren't is stuffy. Yeah. And I feel like that's sort of the line, right? And it's like Roman numerals, fl- straight lugs with screws on. Like, there's a certain sort of like crocodile straps. Yeah, cr- crocodile oh straps. <laughs> yeah. Bleep that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know exactly what I mean. But like, yeah, it's like that. There's 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 dressy cool, and then there's like I don't know that other side. <laughs> yeah, I, I think which also I mean has a customer base. You know, sometimes I feel that way about some longas. I, I won't lie. They're just like they're just like a different they're conservative formal yep. kind of thing. Not all of them, but it's like not from my taste, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I and I think that, that uh even just I'm you know, like working from home now has just been a new kind of like revelation for me and you know when I'm home I can I can wear I can wear the Seamaster. It's not like I'm going to be jumping in the water like the very next second, like when I turn the corner in my, my house, you know? So that's like, that's the thing. Like, you know, I just casually just being able to wear these watches and not feeling like obligated to wear something that's like, Oh, you know, the scenario of, well, like if I need to save someone in, in (laughs) like a body of water or something, you know? So it's, And you wouldn't like let your watch day. hold you back right. regardless, no. right? Like, oh, that guy's drowning, but I got my old Seamaster on, right. like somebody it else is going to have like to get on this. The, <laughs> it would be like the version of, like, hold my beer, except it'd be like, all right, just hold, hold my watch. Yeah. Find Definitely. yourself uh, on, on Everest, but with the, the wrong watch. You know? Yes. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> what how, I dare, how dare you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I meant to wear my Breitling today. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's a good thing. And I think, like, it's okay. You know, you're making, like, uh, a style consideration uh, for the watch. And that's where, you know, it's okay to like uh, tool watches for their style, right? And it, it, and like admitting that to yourself rather than like, okay, I'm wearing this because oh, yeah. I might have to go do like all this kind of stuff. That's like, well, I need to have a tool watch on. It's, it's okay to say, well, I just like the way that looks. So I'm going to wear it for that reason. Beyond like walking into door jams and occasionally slipping on ice, we're not, you know, most, most of us aren't the most adventurous people on earth. So Or just <laughs> our, falling. Our, yeah. Just, you just yeah. fall over. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> have it. I, yeah. I it's it's very icy on the streets of Concord right now. Believe exactly. me, I think about it whenever I, whenever I step outside. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this is probably a terrible story to tell in podcast, but I was at a I was at a bar the other day sitting outside and somebody came out and just flat. Just they were it. down. They were down. It. Friends couldn't pick them it. up. They were too large and it's just like, you know, what happened to their watch? I don't know. I didn't ask. There were bigger concerns, but you know. That, that is the important what kind of watch yeah. they have. How did they it got fare? they got home fine. That's what I'm wondering. But well, they that's, they that's had true. definitely had a few too many. Yeah. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> um so on this line, uh, in in the world of like vintage watches, I feel like that kind of cooled off uh, last year a bit, except mm-hmm. for kind of like very specific uh, watches. Um, but I feel like there's there's people who have kind of gotten cold feet or scared a little bit by some of the sophistication uh, in like not proper, correct vintage pieces coming to market. Um, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot like it's easy to get spooked uh, by that stuff. And I think that a lot of people like w- with a lot of enthusiasm kind of got into this and then maybe got burned once, twice, thrice. And then we're like, ah, yeah, that's, you know, maybe I'm going to take a step back from this kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wonder what the, what the coming year is going to look like for, for just like normal vintage watches, like not 
Paul Newman Daytona <laughs> vintage watches and perpetual calendar AP vintage watches. Uh, but like the kind of stuff that we used to enjoy kind of like searching through eBay late at mm. night, looking for and finding hidden treasures and stuff like that. Like now it's kind of, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, Are there any brands left that haven't been sort of like caught up in that wheel of, you know, it feels like it turns yeah. and, you know, like, uh, I guess it's an independent whatever, but just like the Daniel Roth craze, it sort of felt like it's out of nowhere. Like last year, Daniel Roths were the independent watch to own. It's like they've been sitting around and for 30 years waiting for yep. people. So like, I don't know if there's anything left. Like, has Sakura had its moment? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'd like to see Zen kind of go back mm -hmm. to their, that first release of their titanium watches. So the 8826, the... 8820, the, that's like a funky looking diver. And then the um, Zen 244, which is a uh, kind of a engineer 36 millimeter watch with like a high magnetism uh, uh, rating, resistance rating. So yeah, I think Zen is one of those brands where I would like to see them revisit those watches from the early 90s. And I don't know, maybe, I don't know if we've seen it yet, but is is that like a time frame now where like, brands have kind of gone back is it like late enough like so it's like 20 years later to kind of revisit those watches yeah is the 90s vintage yet <laughs> right yeah. i think yeah. i think it's it an important question for yeah. Yeah. i don't know if it's <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know if it's old enough for like you're saying for a brand to quite go back of their own archives though it's happening soon i mean 90s right but it's certainly mm -hmm. old enough for the value of those watches to have gone up i mean the, yeah. that millennial age range is certainly a value now for secondhand. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we talked a lot about it with the IWC 3706 and uh, in kind of the, the era that that represents yeah. for like tool watches and some of these brands. And it's also the last of the Tritium Speedmasters and stuff like yeah, that. Right like there. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in uh, that kind of, yeah, mid 90s, late 90s, maybe yeah. even early aughts of, of kind of, I think people are kind of poking around in this yeah. space a lot, um, looking for what might be there. Like, what are these pockets that aren't, you know, everybody's flashing on Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Like, what can I find on my own that I'm going to like and kind of start to, um, you know, build up my own lane, um, uh, you yeah. know, to get back to that. And I think that's a good thing to, to be doing. Um, but I, I think just in general, like vintage, vintage, like it's getting, I don't mm -hmm. know, it's getting like dicier and, and, yeah. and dicier in my opinion. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, with Zinn in particular, though, I, I agree with you, Thomas, like, I'd love to see them kind of break out of what they've, been doing for the last five years or so nothing wrong with it but i feel like they kind of revisit one or two cases and the u50 is obviously their biggest sort of break from that but it's really a slight scaling down of another yeah. watch so it's yeah but like they you know that watch you have i forget i don't remember the reference number on it. is that the mm -hmm. 244 it's the 8826 that's the one you have yeah. i mean i like yeah. i've never seen a in like that it's so simple and classic right. like you think they could bring that out and it yeah. almost revitalized the the five five sixes and stuff in that kind of way by like you know I don't know just doing more with the simple three handers. Yeah, yeah. Even the the diver and you have brought this um, in in our Slack group. The diver, the eight eight two zero, and that case is just kind of like weird in its own way. And that was my first time seeing that type of case where the bezels kind of like sits flush inside the case, and yeah. then the case kind of opens up on the nine o'clock side and the three o'clock side for you to rotate the bezel. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in a way it, it was kind of like how the PO one case kind of mm -hmm. like kind of comes up what flies like away and kind of like, over the bezel. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's just weird. And, um, yeah, Blake, I agree with you, man. It's just like that. I think those, those are the, like people like have seen like the same watches out there on Instagram and what have you. And people are just trying to find their own little lane um, and try to find these watches that, like no one really knows about and kind of like them because they're they're quirky in their own little way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and yeah when that, that's a healthy thing like go do it go find weird shit from you know from from an era that nobody's like really talking about i think that's a good thing um and uh the 2000 to 2003 era period <laughs> yeah, now is really yeah. it's gonna be the next hot one so <laughs> jump on that <laughs> Y2K watch. <laughs> well, think about it. People that were like born in that range are like yeah. turning 20 or something. No, for year. sure. Now I, they're going to be like looking for birth yeah, year birth watches, year watches. In, in that time, right? Like that was, a, that's, I don't know if that's still a thing to people. Is that still important to people? Yeah, the birth yeah, year I'm watch sure, thing? Like, sure. I don't know. Yeah. But we're too old. Our birth year watches are cost too much. So oh my God. <laughs> 1984, are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Pour one out for us uh, <laughs> <laughs> listeners. Elder uh, millennials. Yeah. The plight of elder millennials. Uh, so, 
speaking of that, like, what brands would you like to see make a comeback in 2022? I guess I have I had written down uh, Universal Geneve, of course, which I'll say every year, um, and uh, like the Orfinas of the world. Like, I feel like there's a lot of brands that are just kind of like mm. right mm-hmm. there that could be you know ripe for a return, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there's a lot of value. I mean, we're always waiting for Universal Geneve and Anacar and whatever to kind of yeah. like whatever ship is there. Because I, I know at least with Anacar, like that is a brand that exists. They just, I th- I don't know like what market they're in, but I, I remember as, as Zach when you and I were doing like a uh, sleeper or like we did something similar like a few years ago. We were looking, we're like, oh yeah. wait, this brand is here. Like it is, <laughs> they have a website. Why didn't we look this up before? I think like Anacar is. Uh, <laughs> I could be confusing it with another brand, but like they're owned yeah. by like a like a big like chinese holding company or or yeah something. which i think is the same um, for universal genev too like yeah yeah uh if universal genev came back and watched and offered watches only in nft form would you retire from the watch business <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's it i'm like, done maybe. i'm out yeah <laughs> um you know what's gonna happen with one of these uh... no no for sure <laughs> um we are definitely going to see more watch-related NFTs. In are we going to see more watch-related like, that NFTs? Is, that is okay. going, I guarantee it, that is going to happen. You're going to yeah. see brands you would never expect releasing NFTs. Alone. Will the wind-up watch shop start selling NFTs? No. <laughs> okay. No, it's not as long as I... I don't even understand them, so no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think Shopify supports that yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Hell no. Um, you know, so this is a brand that does exist, and I just think... And I know they release watches regularly. They just, I just think they need a, they need a moment. They need something to happen for them, which is uh, Eberhard and Co. Yeah, um, yeah. And like they, they last year they sort of brought, brought back that like classic Scaphograph 300 mm-hmm. with the triangular markers, but I don't. I think they upscaled it. It didn't have a moment. Didn't catch on. I don't. I like. I saw one person write about it, and mm-hmm. I don't know. I just. There's something there. It's another classic brand. They have great, that's a good really one. cool archives. Yeah. And yeah, they've got awesome watches back. You know, like a few years ago, I think was it ever heard or am I mixing up like some five, of these brands? Five, but six years ago, they had didn't they, they win the really GPHG cool G whatever one 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 of those <laughs> the Baby Arm Awards for like the the for a different one of their dive watches, which was. Not the most exciting dive watches I recall. Pretty standard three, like yeah, by today's standard. But yeah. I remember when it came out, it was like, oh, yeah. that's that's really cool. It that's it, yeah, yeah. I can't. They have a chronograph the name, that you know, again, it had like a roulette date wheel when people were, were first like rediscovering that. And yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I think uh, Volcane is another one that I would kind of place. I in think that, in that realm as well. Yes, and I think I've seen. Um, this is public knowledge because it's on their Instagram account, but I believe the same person who's behind Nevada Grinch and, and uh, Excelsior Park is now also part of Volcane. So okay, okay. they seem to have their finger on the pulse. So perhaps they can. Yeah, I remember a bit, maybe eight, seven years ago being like pretty excited about like, oh, Volcane is like doing cool stuff now. Yeah. But it was they had like a year. It was like a flash in the pan type yeah. of thing. No, they had a moment when they brought back that. um <clears throat> That alarm compressor. Yeah, with the yeah. decompression uh, yeah. scales. You, I feel on like it. you wrote about that for Hodinky at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I and it was reading. awesome. <laughs> yeah. It took me a long time, by the way, to figure out what the hell all that stuff. <laughs> so, so this is a dial. It's like full of numbers and graphs and all that kind of stuff. But the whole thing is like if you you, you can calculate like if you're at a certain depth or a certain time, it would like you twist the thing and it would show you your decompression stops all the way up to the surface. Mm-hmm. So you know. Useful stuff, uh, as we as we as we know. <laughs> um, Zach, um, what about you, Thomas? You got any brands uh, that that you'd bring back? Um, you know what? I don't know. I don't know as far as like brands to bring back, but um, in my head, I was thinking of like brands that I thought took a step forward and will take continue to take a step forward. Yeah. Uh, in 2022, and a couple of them was well, one of them was Brightling. I thought Brightling made some some good strides this year. Um, and I thought that maybe if they kind of tweak some things, uh, for, for certain watches, uh, I think they, when they released their new, um, their heritage chronograph, I thought that was pretty cool. And I think it's Breitling. was just one of those brands, but they're just almost there. And then yeah. those were like the, up like the aerospace was just one that I like revisited yeah, in 2021. Aerospace. And I'm just like, man, like if they, if they can kind of just rip off of that a little more, um, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I think I think Breitling was one, but as far as like brands to like revive that, I, I, not one comes to mind right now. But no, Bright, Breitling is a good call. I think they're they're another brand that I think has 
is does interesting stuff from time to time has some like really handsome designs that they come out with they've also these obviously have a, a big back catalog and things that they could be doing but yeah i agree they're they're, they're kind of uh, just a few tweaks away from uh, from greatness with a lot of the watches that they come out with so the collaboration um, with the deus the, uh, the, uh, oh, the motorcycle yeah. brand that was deus X, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that was really good um yeah that was a nice looking watch uh, i agree um yeah zach what about you anything coming to um, mind yeah, no, I can't really think of a, of a, a, a. So many of these old brands have already been brought back with like varying levels yeah. of success. Yeah. Like I think, kind of like, um, you know, like vintage watches. Like maybe we've kind of looked under every rock. Maybe it's the same with these like brands coming back. Like I don't know that there are are, are a whole lot more of like you know really brands that were like actually viable like in the you know fifties, sixties, seventies that. Um, it would really matter if they if they came back. I, mm -hmm. I think it's still worth, uh, you know, like looking at those old vintage watches and kind of drawing inspiration from them. But I don't know. Yeah. That I, I have like a list of brands that I uh, that I, I need to see. Yeah, I think that's what it'll really come down to. Like, there's a lot of really great kind of individual designs across this landscape that <clears throat> are kind of like ripe to be pulled from, mm -hmm. like the like those Walkman chronographs from back when. Oh, yeah, Walkman. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were like a distributor or something. Something like. But they had some like yeah, really cool strange. looking. Oh yeah, the Wacken Triple that, Chronograph. Yeah. That, that was your seventy twos, I, I think. Oh. Yeah, kick um, myself for not getting when they were still under a thousand those bucks. Have really gone up in price. They've gone up. They sort of leveled out, but they're just you know it's a. And that's another like more. name that would probably be you know oh we yeah. can cash in on that and uh, yeah I mean that's the thing that's unfortunate though is just like when it's just that you yeah. know when it's just yeah. like oh man we can cash in on a handful of these signs and like you know that triple calendar chronograph it's a great example like you couldn't really even bring it back right now without like some movement i don't know like a very high-end movement probably mm -hmm. you know yeah. or debut. and like so it'd be a challenge and they'd bring yeah. it back kind of wrong and then there's always this like when you get past that archive of like the hits what do you do and uh, you know i think this is the challenge we're gonna be seeing in five to ten years for a lot of these resurrected brands it's like yeah. I, how do you how do you move on how do you do mm -hmm. something new and You've you know. captured a moment in the past. Yeah. Very yeah. well. But, so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is Secura available, though? <clears throat> S-I-C-U-R-A. They had some gnarly watches. Mm -hmm. You know, they had the, uh, they had one that had a, like a, a pocket knife on the side. Uh, so like a little, oh. like the thing, like the kind of size knife that's on like a, you know, Victory Knox, like XD, yeah. like just on the side of this square case watch. Totally <laughs> ugly, but like just amazingly <laughs> bizarre. And then they have one, and I, I don't know why I never did, but I, back in the day, like, I was bidding. I just stopped at a certain point. Probably went for, like, $600, and I stopped at $300. But they have it's a, they have a, a second hand. You stopped there. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> at the time, there probably wasn't. Um, the second hand is this giant anchor on the dial. It probably totally, like, because there's probably not nearly enough torque in the movement to spin it. But it's, like, it's just so ridiculous and cool. I don't know that like who the hell was behind that brand? A couple of like like crazy people. Crazy, yeah, great. surely, yeah. Um, Looking to set themselves apart in a yeah, you know, uh, increasingly saturated market. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Know, they were the OG micro bands. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I speaking of, I think independence and small brands are like really primed. Oh, yeah. uh, like I feel like they had a real banger of a year last year, uh, like up and down the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, JPEG, JPEG, I think is a brand that's like oh, that's, yeah. that's going to be a brand that I think we're going to start hear a lot more about um, this year. Um, <clears throat> all the way down to like the Baltic and Serica. Like I think expectations for these brands right now are like really high uh, from collectors. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be interesting to see like how they meet those expectations or you know what they do to react to that. Um, <clears throat> uh, There's still a lot of. Um manufacturing challenges that these smaller brands are facing you know they've always had to kind of had an uphill battle being given like smaller orders and everything like that and just mm -hmm. general supply chain is still a challenge yeah. but um they seem to be working their way through it you know with pre-orders and things like that but hopefully hopefully that won't stop brands from getting into the yeah. game too you know and hopefully this, this past year has given them a sense of like of demand for their for their watches yeah. and what like when they plan some of these things you know, hopefully yeah. they can they can plan accordingly. Uh, you know, Ming immediately comes to oh, mind, yeah. and of course. I feel like they had a, a huge 2021. Um, and they're Absolutely. another brand that like brands that you know I think people are going to have really high expectations of. I mean, did any year. of their watches take longer than 30 <clears throat> minutes or something? Well, it's not even they sold out immediately. Like they 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 had their windows. Yeah, it's a <clears throat> kind of a brilliant model because it's just like it is. It's just. So, they kind of like to say, well, it's sold out because it's like we only had it available for this time. Anyway. Yeah, I, th I think the 1709 was interesting because they, they yeah. knew like, all right, we're going to make this many 
Um, so they will be available not too long after the yeah. release. If the demand is more than that, we'll open up another window and people can order them and they'll just have to wait a little bit longer. But at least they're like trying to account for everyone, mm-hmm. more or less. You just have to have some patience. <laughs> Which not all of us no. have. <laughs> I refuse. Out of the question. That was out not of the, one of, of my <laughs> resolutions. No. Um, yeah, but no, I think uh, uh, especially with a lot of the kind of like mainstream like hype stuff still being like really hard to get. And I don't see that changing no. this year. Um, yeah, I think people are more and more going to be looking for other areas to get into with the, with their collecting, you know. And uh, and that's where the, the Chapex of the world, the Baltics, the Sericas, the Mings, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff are kind of like, okay, well, that's like the next and, step. And then, you know, what's behind that? <laughs> you, you know, it was really interesting this week to see, uh, like we put up a post about those new versions of the Brew watch, so, uh, the metric that were yeah. coming out, three new colors, small batch, I believe, of them, whatever. Everyone was like, they're already sold out. They're already sold out. It's like they actually hadn't gone up for sale yet, but yeah. people are so just the, ready to buy them and ready to be disappointed. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, but once again, congratulations to Brew and other brands like that. Mm-hmm. He's been around for a while and he's been working hard to get to this point of like popularity, but now you're there and it's a, ch- there's other challenges. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shout out to Jonathan for, for doing a great job on those. Um, uh, I'm glad to see them resonating so well. Yeah, so they really, he hit a chord with those. Uh, and boy, that case and bracelet is awesome. Yeah. It's just yeah. awesome. It's, Once again, if they brought out a few years ago, it, was, it would just, I don't think it would have gone, it was, it was too funky, but that's hard to do. I was going to say, I was, uh, I'm one of those people. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., I got the alarm. He's got it on the... <laughs> you got it. Right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Lucky for you, this comes out after that. So we're, not, we're not telling more. Yeah, exactly. That's the reason why I was, I was like, you know, I could say this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which color are you going for, Josh? I actually like, I know they had those three new dials, but I actually just really like the original one. The original one mm. to me just really hit a soft spot for me. Yeah. The new, the new like sort of uh, like funky like sea green dial is pretty cool yeah um and i think i think you know i think the the other two colorways where i believe it's like a blue and a silver that i feel like that'll appeal maybe to more people but i just the original one is just so cool to me like yeah. I, really, I really like the yeah. colors the, the, color the silver dial original one or the black dial original oh one? sorry the black dial original one yeah. Right on. yeah. yeah yeah it was pretty awesome uh he's restocking all of them might just be those four, like the I think three new colors think, and the black. Yeah, I think it's the, yeah, yeah, I think it's just those four. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe I'll keep an eye out too. I like that watch a lot. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, to close things out, I thought we could each go around and give our one uh, uh, most optimistic prediction, <laughs> craziest prediction, or what we would really like right. to see uh, in 2022. Who wants to kick us off? Zach, you got something for us, or do you? Want your... Um. I mean, I don't know if it's a prediction so much as just like, well, it's like it's a bit of optimism, maybe like some hope. Yeah, there you that, go. Uh, yeah. Like, I, I'd like, I'd like to see us all those in the watch, you know, watch media space and those in like the watch enthusiast space just kind of like move past like these hype watches. Like, I feel like sometimes we just go from like one hype watch to the next, and that just really drives everything. And um, I don't know. I'm just kind of like, I'm just kind of over that. I'm just kind of over like things being like immediately sold out and unavailable and people complaining about that. And, um, it just seems to be like an endless cycle. Like there's lots of great watches you can buy, you know, Mm -hmm. that are like available that are priced fairly. Um, so like, let's, let's talk about those. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. No. Like, that's kind of my my hope for the new year. But that's always my hope, and I'm always disappointed. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, just gonna say. Well, so your hope is that human nature changes. Basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's uh, not not likely. Um, Thomas, Thomas, you got anything? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but uh, what, what do you think? What's your you got um, crazy? You know, I for me, I just and I, I think Zach kind of had mentioned this uh, as well that it's the the subtle shift now towards more of the. Um, independent brands um again like i don't know like just separating micro brand from it from the in, independent brand like how that's a whole different conversation but i'm guessing more of the kind of um small batch independent brands that you know like i i guess they're and for me personally this is kind of like what i've been learning was that you know it's there's more to the just the aesthetic of the case and then the dial and um as i kind of continue learning um uh about watches and just understanding and appreciating the movement and that kind of thing that goes into uh, the finishing of the movement or the different complications um, and what have you. So, yeah, I think um, 
what am I trying to say here? Yeah, so I think it shifted <laughs> in the towards independence and uh, and I don't know. Maybe hopefully we get to see some more like complications and whatnot. I mean, for me personally, yeah. that's kind of what I appreciate yeah. now. Um, uh, aside from you know the tool watch uh, mm-hmm. tool watch phase, but yeah, independence and complications. That's where I'm kind of like leaning towards in 2022. All right. That's what I like to see. More uh, uh, accessible complications uh, from independence yeah. uh, too would be a nice. Yeah, I, I agree. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I will second that. I, I'm always waiting for, I mean, part of it is like the movement is, is challenges of what is available, but like, yeah, I mean, give me more regulators and jump hours and calendars and, you know, brands like Christopher Ward that have been able to do their own thing. Like, okay, guys, that's, that's, uh, let's see it. You know, <laughs> especially people get creative with yeah. what's there. Yeah. Like right. Meister Singer in the Bellora, like using something yeah. that's oh, like that was a great common, but like using yeah. it for something else or getting. Yeah, that's I would love to see more of that. More of that for that sure. Creativity around these things. And then I'll be hyper, hyper, hyper specific because yeah. the one watch I promised myself that I might let myself buy this year. Otherwise, I'm not buying any watches. Don't hold me to that. Okay. It'll probably be I'll probably have, <laughs> I probably will uh, have broken that by the end of this month. Um, but like I'm I, I'm ready. I am personally I am personally ready for the Tudor Black 58 GMT now. I think uh, that I, I came around. I don't, you know, I don't know one else thought about that watch ever or has ever, ever tried yeah. to predict that. But like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was just thinking about it. And I think uh, a local jump hour uh, watch is something I don't have. Uh, local jump hour GMT. Yeah. I don't, when I've had the other kinds of GMTs, I've actually found them a little bit fussy and annoying to use mm-hmm. given how they kind of work. So um, yeah, jump hour, jumping you know what I'm trying to say? The local jumping hour GMTs. <laughs> yeah. Just a, I just find it a better way to work, so I kind of would like that. Mm-hmm. And then I don't have a tutor, and I like that. So, you know, yeah. so it kind of would all come together. Could I, all come together for I, me. Tutor. So listen, we're ready. Yeah, we're just for a black bay. I think the world is finally GMT ready for, in a for that watch. Ca- case. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, probably you know made out of you know adamantium or I don't know. That would be your luck. Yeah. They would do it. It'd be some yeah, like, it's, bizarre yeah, material. Yeah, made 100% out of like super <laughs> platinum. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's $200,000. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, I've, got a, I've got a specific Tudor prediction as well. And, uh, in, and I think it was the exact same one that I made last year. And, and that is for the, uh, the Heritage Chronograph. <laughs> to return, uh, and I'm we're not going to drop this until you and I are very back. boring. We're yes, very boring. We're, yeah, boring yeah. and predictable. Okay, but, here's uh, this, here. I'll do another. What one. if they put it out in a silver case? I don't care. I'll buy it. Like if they if they update <laughs> it right. and they and it's and it's all I want. <laughs> all I want is like just like a slightly slimmer case, or at least like some shape to the bottom. Or just use their the movement. Case. They never did that with their chronograph. Movement, yeah, you know, oh, that's um, all I want. That's all I want. I'd like to see. You know, so we had the we had the 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 canopus canopus gold thing uh speedy 321 already and we know like so last year they did the, they did the first speedy and then they did the the chronoscope tachometer in the middle of the year at some point which was a bizarre release so mm-hmm. i'm hoping the wild card speedmaster of this year should they should that be a thing is a return to the mark ii again Ooh, yeah. find me on the mark ii that would be great um yeah and hey if you do that uh, omega we don't need the date down there at six o'clock exactly uh, so just chill <laughs> Uh, but I would love just, to see just chill. <laughs> just chill. I would love to see a return to the, to, yeah. to the Mark II. Talk about a cool case. Um, I mean, it should have the the coaxial. It should have the same movement as the manual wound. I mean, if you're following, that's what the Mark II was. Yeah. It was the same movement. But if they could do that too, and that's a the, the new Speedmaster is like a slightly thinner yeah. case for for what it is. So yeah, I think you could be onto something there. Um, yeah, you heard it. You heard it here for uh, for Omega. Uh, okay, uh, one last thing. Oh, I forgot. I was going to mention. I was walking in um, Manhattan the other day, and it was it was not like at night, but it was like later dusk. And this uh, much older gentleman, uh, I passed on the street. He was like putting on his backpack, is a little unkempt, but then he like pulled the hat out and put it on, and it was an Urwerk hat. Interesting. Uh, yeah. It was so unexpected for this to happen, like right in front of me. And I passed him and I said, I like your hat. And he kind of gave a, oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I have the same hat. And, and like, <laughs> I don't, uh, it's a weird thing. It's just such yeah. a random uh, thing. I don't know. So if you're out there or work man listening, um, that is, I see you. <laughs> the, like, the watch in public, like, it, it's it's a funny thing. I, I I was once in an airport with Adam Craniotis, we're, I think, on a going on an trip, and like, he saw a guy at Braymont. I don't know if he's going to like me telling the story. Too bad, Adam. Um, <laughs> he can but he was just like, he just said, he, yeah, this guy walked by 
we're wearing a Braemont. And uh, Adam was like, nice Braemont. And the guy was really not cool with <laughs> him having said that to him. He was really? just like, <laughs> and like ran away. Oh you know, gosh. he tried to bond with this guy. Or, yeah. You know, so maybe. Yeah. And Adam Cranon okay. isn't intimidating looking at all. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> to be talking to you in the middle of the He airport. definitely wasn't wearing sunglasses in an airport at like seven in the morning, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I do remember, Zach, like even before I came on on board uh, for Worn and Wound, I remember listening back to podcasts maybe a couple of years ago. And maybe maybe it's just you just have bad luck because I remember you telling this story about asking someone at Starbucks about a um, it was like a Nomos or something or something like that. It was a barista. It, it was, yeah, it was a coffee it was, place. And, it yeah, was, and she was just like, all right, like just like back up. Like, yeah, yeah it did not go over well. It definitely was seemed yeah. like a really bad flirt. And I was just honestly interested in the watch is all. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Slow you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, Adam. We love you. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, listeners, um, what would you like to see in 2022? Uh, what are your predictions? What are your wishes? What are your hopes? Let us know down in the comments. Uh, be sure to tune in next week. We've got a, a special guest lined up, uh, I think. So it should be a fun one. Um, and until next time, thank you for listening. Take care.